So today's question comes from Ariel and her email reads, I need your help understanding this. My mom seems to believe that there will only be 144,000 Christians in heaven and that there are only 144,000 Christians that have ever existed. Is this true? And if not, who are the 144,000? 144,000. So thank you for your question, Ariel. And this is a great question. And this is one that I've had to come to my own conclusion with over the years by doing my own studies on it. So let's start at the very beginning. Okay. In my estimation, the 144,000 is more symbolic than literal. And this is why I believe that. Going back to the Old Testament, the origins of the 144,000 comes from the 12 tribes of Israel. The 12 tribes consisting of 12,000 people of each tribe, of which totals the 144,000. And this as a collective represents the church and all believers from a symbolic perspective. Okay. Now, why do I believe that this is more symbolic than literal? Because in the book of Revelation, the 144,000 is referenced in chapter 6 and 7 as being those who are sealed and protected by God speaking about all the elect as a collective, okay? And we know that God can't be referencing the first 144,000 because they're already dead. So it makes more sense that he's using the 144 as a symbol of all of his children. Now, the second and most important reason why I believe the 144,000 is symbolic is because in Revelation 14, 3, they're described as the redeemed of the earth, okay? So to those who believe that it's only the 144,000 that are gonna be in heaven, what you're saying is that the only people that will be in heaven are the initial people of the 12 tribes that were established in the Old Testament in the book of Numbers. That's what you're saying. OK, and we know that that can't be true. OK, it's speaking about the elect people of God as a collective. So I hope I've clearly explained why the 144,000 is more of a symbol of the church rather than a distinct number of people. OK, I'm sure there will be more than 144,000 people or Christians in heaven. You know, the passage in Revelations 320. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him. First of all, Jesus is talking to a church. He's not talking to a sinner's heart. But let's say that we can apply it that way. 就算我们能够应用在罪人身上，不信主的身上。This is the way I say it. 这我会怎么说啊？Sir Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart. 先生，主耶稣在你心门外敲门。Should I to open that door that he come in? 呃，should I say it again? Would you like to open the door? 你愿意敞开你的心门让他进来吗？ Because if he comes in, he will give you salvation. 如果他进来，他会给你救恩。and the man says, yes, yes. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. Jesus knocks on the door. And the man runs over to the door. He's going to open it up. But right before he turns the doorknob, Jesus goes, wait. You need to understand something. When I come in, I will cleanse you from all your sins. I will save you. I will give you eternal life. But you need to know this. When I come in, the house is no longer yours. It's mine. You are no longer yours. You're mine. When I come in, I am not only Savior. I am owner. And I am Lord.